Do you feel like you are sitting in an ash heap right now? Do you feel like you're sitting among ashes? Well, listen, we all find ourselves there at some point. And, you know, if you are there, you're not alone because often we go through times where the things in our life are reduced to ashes. It's like they're incinerated, they're burnt up and all we've got left is just this dust, this, this ash around us. And, and the things that were in our life have gone, they've disappeared. And we're thinking, God, will I ever live again? Will I ever, you know, have hope again? Will I ever have another relationship again? Whatever it is you've lost, you think and you pray, God, will, will things be restored? Will I, will I see life again? And, you know, this is a theme in the Bible, um, ashes. A lot of times people found themselves in ashes for whatever reason. And there was three main reasons why people were reduced to ashes or were found sitting in ashes. And the first was because of repentance. It was, a, it was an ancient custom. If people wanted to repent and humble themselves before God, they would sit in the dust and they would throw dust on their, their head and they would roll around in the ashes to show that just as dust is nothing, so too they were nothing before God and they needed his grace and his mercy. And, you know, we find this in the life of Job. Job said to God, he said, I repent in dust and ashes because he thought he was righteous. But when God finally examined him, he realized he wasn't and he came up short before God. We find this with Mordecai. When Mordecai heard about the, the plot of Haman to destroy the Jews, he was so distraught. His life and the life of so many Jewish people were about to be annihilated. It's said that he put on sackcloth and, and sat in dust and ashes and he cried out to God for mercy. And sometimes we have to get to a place where we're so desperate, we have to humble ourselves. We don't literally sit in ashes today or put on sackcloth. Although I heard of one minister in another country who actually does wear sackcloth even today when he's humbling himself. But we do go before God, prostrate ourselves and we cry out for his mercy. So that's one reason we could find ourselves in ashes, spiritually speaking. Another one is loss. You know, we all go through losses at different times. And in the Bible, David, he um, he'd, he'd gone into battle with the Philistines and he was willing to fight against Israel with the Philistine army, but they turned him away and he, he basically lost his job that day as, as a military uh, officer. And he went home to where he, he, uh, where he lived with him and his men and their families. And it was a place called Ziglag. And when they got there, the enemy had come and they'd burnt the whole place down. And they'd taken the women and their children and all their possessions. And the men were sitting there left with nothing but ashes. They were bitter. They were distraught. But the Bible says that David, he, he, he found strength in the Lord his God. And sometimes we find ourselves in a place of loss. We, we lose a relationship. We lose a job. We lose, you know, a, an income. We lose uh, a church because of different reasons. Maybe it's split. Maybe we've had to move areas. We, we lose a home. We lose our peace. And, and sometimes we're just left with the ashes of what was. But listen, we have to do what David did and, and rejoice in him again. Find our strength in him. And then thirdly, we, we find ourselves in ashes when we're tested. 1 Corinthians 3.13, it says, on judgment day, when it finally comes, God's going to test our work with fire. And every person's work is going to be tested with a fire to see if it survives. And if it survives, great, it will stand. And if it doesn't, it's going to be burnt up and people will be left with ashes. So that's quite a, a sobering thought. And I, I believe that sometimes we go through life, we go through uh, seasons where fire tests what we're doing for God. We go through fiery trials and it test the quality of what we're building for God. And sometimes it survives and sometimes it's burnt up and we're left with ashes. But listen, if you're in that place today and you feel like you're li living with the ashes of yesterday's fruit or yesterday's successes, I want to say there's still hope. Because all throughout the Bible, when people sat in ashes, it was only temporary because God always turned the situation around. And, you know, I can personally say I've had seasons 
where I've sat in ashes, spiritually speaking, yet God has turned it around when I've looked to him, when I've called out to him, when I've prayed to him and asked for restoration. He's done it. And here's three things that God can do with our ashes today. Number one, he can turn our ashes into beauty. Isn't that a good thing? Isaiah 61 3 says that for those who mourn and grieve in the Lord, he will give them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. This was the mission of Jesus. And this should be our mission and mandate today to help those who are grieving and to pray that they will have a crown of beauty instead of ashes. That's what God wants to give us today. I think of Queen Esther in the Bible. Esther lost her parents. Some Jewish sources say that her father died during uh, the mother's pregnancy with her and the mother died during childbirth. We don't know if that's true or not, but she was an orphan and she had no parents. And that's why Mordecai, her uncle, raised her and brought her up as his own child. But she was left with the ashes of not having real parents. She was left with the ashes of being an orphan. But do you know what? God literally turned her ashes into a crown of beauty, a real crown. She became the queen of the largest and greatest empire at that time. Listen, God wants to do that for you today. If you're sitting in a pile of ashes, God wants to lift you up and and put you in a place of, of beauty, into a place of honor, into a place of splendor that you have never known before. And we have seen people ourselves. We've seen people come into the church. We've seen people, um, you know, te- we've heard testimonies of people that have gone through the fire and yet God has turned it around and given them a crown of beauty. Secondly, God can turn our ashes into victory. Malachi 4.3 says that when God moves on our behalf, we will trample on our enemies and they will be ashes under the soul's of our feet. Isn't that good? Isn't that a great promise? The enemies that we're facing today are going to become ashes under our feet. It reminds me of Psalm 91 13 where it says we will tread on the lion and the cobra. I was actually thinking about this first this week and I was thinking how do we tread on a lion? A lion's pretty big. (laughs) It's pretty large. How do we step on a lion? Well it suggests two things. One that it's dead and two that maybe it's, it's burnt up and it's just ashes under our feet, like Malachi 4.3 says. I want to declare today that the enemies you are facing are going to be incinerated by the fire of God. I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about situations. I'm talking about spirits. I'm talking about illnesses that are hitting you and bombarding you. God is going to nuke them with the Holy Spirit and they're going to be ashes under the soles of your feet. I had a vision actually of this very thing when I was a young man, I was praying, I was facing different challenges and and I saw a vision of my enemies under my feet, literally. And, And you know, I can tell you that has come to pass. And thirdly, God can turn our ashes into promotion. Do you believe that? Hannah, in the Bible, she was barren and she was without child and she was mocked by her husband's other wife. And she was left with the ashes of, of being barren. It was a stigma in those days. It, was a, it looked like it was like a curse upon women. But in 1 Samuel 2.8, she declares this, this famous prayer. She says, God raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and has them inherit a throne of honor. I want to say today, if you are sitting on a heap of ashes, get ready to sit on a seat of honor. Amen. Get ready to sit with princes. Get ready to be elevated and, and sit around those who, who are in high positions. God is going to raise you up. And I believe it's a word for some of you today uh, who are watching this. God is going to elevate you. He's going to raise you up. And you're going to suddenly find yourselves in a different, um, a different setting. You're going to find yourselves with people of status, people of, of influence, people even of power. And I just pray that that will be a reality in your life today. You know, God can do this overnight. God can do this in the twinkling of an eye. He can take us from loss. He can take us from defeat. He can take us from what we've lost and and the, the ashes and that place of being humbled 
and, and being uh, left with nothing in our lives like Job. And suddenly he can turn it around in a heartbeat. And I just want to pray, Father, I just pray for everyone that's watching this right now, that if anyone has lost something, anyone has lost someone, anyone has lost something that was dear to them and they feel like what they had is no longer there. Father, I just pray in Jesus' name that as they give you those ashes, as they give you the dust of what remains, that Father, you will turn it into something beautiful, that you will turn it into a a thing of promotion, you will turn it into victory and you will lift them up and you will raise them up And they will sit in high places with Christ Jesus today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.